Hi, this episode is brought to you by my good friend and number one New York Times bestselling author Ryan Blair in his latest book, Rock Bottom to Rock Star, Lessons from the Business School of Hard Knocks. Ryan Blair has battled extreme obstacles from being a former gang member to building companies that generate literally hundreds of millions of dollars. Rock Bottom to Rock Star is available everywhere. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Books A Million. It's available on Barnes & Noble. Folks, if you want to be inspired, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur, then pick up Ryan Blair's latest book, Rock Bottom to Rock Star, Lessons from the Business School of Hard Hard Knocks. If you'd like some more information about Ryan Blair, please visit ryanblair.com. All right. Well, my name is Michael Alden, and we are here in Blue Bay Studios, folks. I always say uh, that I'm not going to be excited for my next guest. I don't know why I say that, but I am super excited for my next guest. My next guest, his name is Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. Uh, he has written 31 books. He has New York Times bestselling books. He has Wall Street Journal uh, bestsellers. You know, one of my favorite books uh, that I picked up of his was Mojo, How to Get It, How to Keep It, and how to get it back if you lose it. And the other one, which I also love, is what got you here won't get you there, how successful people become even more successful. He's literally sought after all over the world by executives, by CEOs. His latest book, Triggers, I mean, if you just look at the, la uh, the, the back of his book, he's got the CEO of Target Corporation endorsing him, the CEO of Best Buy, Pfizer. You know, this gentleman has really been doing it for a long time, and, and I look up to him. I see all the things that he's doing, and I, think, I see the impact um, that he's making on the world. Folks, he charges sometimes upwards to $250,000 to spend time with him, to talk to him about what it takes to be successful. Just to have him on here today, uh, in my estimation, is at least worth that. So if you're looking to grow, if you want to learn from somebody that's been studying it for years, he's a, he's a PhD, he's a professor, uh, he's literally, literally been doing it all, and I'm really, really excited to have him here. Marshall, thanks for being my guest. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, uh, again, I'm super excited for having you here, uh, and uh, so let's just get started because I know you're really, really busy. Um, did you get the list of questions? I did. Wonderful. Great. So what we like to do is we like to ask uh, the same list of questions to everybody, and uh, sometimes I'll go off script just depending on what you say. We'll make it a conversation, and hopefully, uh, actually, not hopefully, I know that people are going to love this. So let's just go right with the first one. Marshall, uh, you know, for those of our viewers and listeners uh, that are looking to become successful, it's, I think it's a, a tough thing to define, but how do you define success? Well, you know, I've done five programs at my house with old guys like me or old people like me, some are women, and the topic is, you know, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And we often reflect on what is success in life, and we've come to five basic factors. Uh, the first factor is health. If you don't have health, the rest of the stuff's kind of irrelevant. Wealth is less significant than you might think. If you look at most studies on wealth and happiness, once you get above a middle class, upper middle class income, not a high correlation between wealth and happiness. You do need enough, though, to live at least a comfortable life. Then the next thing is great relationship with people you love. That's very important. And assuming that you have at least a middle class level of life, you have um, health, you have great relationship with people you love, how do you find success? To me, two words, happiness and meaning. Happiness is, do I love the process of what I'm doing? And meaning is, do I find that the results of what I'm doing to be meaningful for me? And if you can simultaneously achieve happiness and meaning in what you do, you're a successful person. You won the game of life. And you need both, though. If you just try to find happiness without meaning, your life can be empty. That's why it doesn't always work for people to play bad golf with old men at the country club all day and talk about chicken salad sandwiches and discuss gallbladder surgery. Uh, <laughs> you need meaning. On the other hand, if you have meaning with happy, without happiness, you're a victim or a martyr. So the key to success is you need both. You love the process of what you're doing and simultaneously you find it to be meaningful for you. And by the way, no one can find happiness for you but you. No one can define meaning for you but you. So in those terminology, no one can define success for you but you. Wow. You know, uh, I, we could probably go the next three hours or four hours just on those five things that you said. But I do want to ask you, you know, happiness. We, so many people talk about it. Dan Harris wrote the great, great book, 10% Happier. Uh, and, you know, it's something that I think that we all strive for. Is there is there a moment in someone's life where they where they just they they realize that they've that they found the happiness and the meetingness? Is it a is it a is it a journey that changes over time? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? 
Oh, I think it is indeed a journey. Um, one thing that uh, I've done is some interesting research on employee engagement, and almost everything written on employee engagement is what can the company do to engage you, and absolutely nothing on what can you do to engage yourself. And what we've really focused on now is teaching people to take responsibility for their own engagement. I have six basic questions that are great to ask every day. Number one, did I do my best to set clear goals? Number two, did I do my best to make progress toward achieving my own goals? Number three, did I do my best to find meaning? Number four, did I do my best to be happy? Number five, did I do my best to build positive relationships? And finally, number six, did I do my best to be fully engaged? If any of your listeners would like to participate in this study, send me an email, just write six questions study. I'll sign them up for this. Our results are amazing. 10 days after being tested on these six questions, 46% of the people say I'm better at everything. Um, about 75% said I got better at least four of the six items. 94% uh, said I got better at least one. About 6% said no change and less than 1% said overall things are worse. So pretty amazing results. Teaching people to take responsibility though for their own lives as opposed to waiting for someone else. Wow, that's uh, you know I was feverishly writing these things down again. For those, here's the good news: is uh, this is we will rebroadcast this as well. So if you do, uh, if you do want decide you want to uh, listen to this again, make sure you do take notes. And for those of you that are listening and joining us right now uh, on Periscope and on Facebook Live, we are on with Marshall Goldsmith. He is a New York Times, Wall Street Journal best-selling author. He's a PhD. Uh, he speaks all over the world. He's written 31 books. His latest book, what, but Marshall, by the way, I love just the cover of this book. It's beautiful. Uh, triggers. Uh, it's you know uh, creating behavior that lasts, becoming the person you want to be. So if you want some more information about Marshall Goldsmith, you can just Google Marshall Goldsmith, uh, and he's pretty much the only guy that comes up. He's been doing this a long time. And like he said, if you do want some more information, Marshall, what is your email address? So if those people that uh, were listening right now do want to yeah. uh, take that study. Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L, -L, at MarshallGoldsmith.com. Perfect. Uh, uh, that's easy. And uh, all right, so second question. Um you know, for someone that has been, been, you know, you've really, you know, I would definitely consider you obviously an entrepreneur, a business person, you know, what has been uh, your biggest professional obstacle, obstacle throughout your life and how did you overcome it? I think my biggest obstacle is the same obstacle my clients have is my own ego. Um, <laughs> in my job as an executive coach, the biggest problem, and I've trained thousands of people to be coaches, the biggest problem coaches have is the ego of the coach. See, we want people to get better so we can look in the mirror and feel good about ourselves. And it's very hard to get over this self-ego thing and start realizing that, hey, the key to my success is not me. The key to my success is all those great people that are around me. This is very easy to understand in theory. This is incredibly difficult to understand in practice. Right. Yeah. You know, I've had some people on too, and they talk a little bit about, or they talked about the whole self awareness thing. I think, you know, uh, type A personalities like myself, we uh, we definitely have big egos, and it, you're, like you said, it, it is difficult. Do you find that, um, you know, you talked about, the, you know, some of the things that some of the questions we can ask in, in the five points. Do you find that there is a there is a good method to kind of keep your ego in check on a day to day basis? Yeah. One thing I highly recommend is something called the daily question process. This is something I've been doing for years. I highly recommend it. Here's how it works. Get out an Excel spreadsheet. Write down a series of questions that represent what's most important in your life, friends, family, direct reports, coworkers, etc. Then every day, seven days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day fill out the form. And at the end of the week, you get a little report card. I'm going to warn your listeners in advance, the report card at the end of the week might not be quite as beautiful as the corporate values plaque that they have stuck up on the wall. <laughs> when, you do, when you do this every day, you quickly learn that, you know, life is very easy to talk and life is very, very difficult to live. I've been doing this for years. And I can guarantee you it's, it's very easy to understand that at the same time, it's very, very difficult to do. Um, I pay a woman to call me every day just to do this. Really? Somebody asked me, why do I pay a woman to call me every day just to listen to me read, read questions that I wrote and provide answers that I wrote every day? Why do I pay a woman to call me? Well, you know, my name is Marshall Goldsmith. I'm the world's leading executive coach. I know. I pay a woman to call me every day because I'm too cowardly to do this by myself and too undisciplined. I, I 
need help and it's okay. Well, see, once we get over that macho, I can do it on my own nonsense and realize we all need a little help. It's okay. Life is a whole lot better. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's great advice. Again, like you mentioned, I mean, uh, Mar- we're, we're on with Marshall Goldsmith. You know, we've talked a little bit about his credentials. There, he's been recognized by Forbes magazine, the Wall Street Journal. He's been uh, listed as one of the top five thinkers in leadership in the world. Uh, and for you to say that even you need help, Marshall, I think is really profound. And and for those again listening right now, or maybe in the future <laughs> they'll be listening to the podcast, take 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 stock in what he just said. No matter how big you are. Uh, it's always important to self do, do a self assessment or self check. I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, well, you know, you know, one thing I'm very proud of in my book triggers. Twenty seven major CEOs endorsed that book. As you mentioned, thirty years ago, no CEO would admit to having a coach. They'd be ashamed to have a coach. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at it right now too. You know, so I think you know that I have a, I have a book that literally just came out today, and I was looking just at the first like. 10 pages or so of your book and the executives that endorsed it, you know, CEO of New York Public Library, CEO of Guardian Life, Harvard Business Review, uh, Rothschild North, North America, you know, Getty Images. And then on the back, again, you got Best Buy, Target, uh, C, the CEO of Pfizer. Uh, I mean, it's just remarkable the amount of people that you've worked with. And, and the things that you must learn every single day is amazing. That's why, again, I love all your books because – uh, you're able to take that knowledge that you've learned from some of the top executives in the world and then you, you, you put it in a book, which is awesome. Well, that's what I love about coaching. What I love about coaching is not what I teach them. What I love about coaching is all they teach me. Yeah. I figure I learn about 10 times from, from my clients what they learn from me. And this is why I love doing the podcast as well. So, you know, I don't have to pay Marshall Goldsmith 250 grand. <laughs> uh, that was a joke, Marshall. You're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> So, uh, so you are a PhD, uh, I know, uh, from the UCLA's Anderson School of Management. And, and this question, uh, in this day and age, I like to ask a lot of people, is traditional higher education, meaning post-high school, important for business success? Yeah, I, I, my answer to that is it really depends. Okay. See, I have uh, two children, and they're both on either side of that spectrum. Uh, my daughter, Kelly, a um, graduate of Duke University, a PhD from Yale, She's a professor at the number one ranked Kellogg School of Management and Marketing. Um, you know, for her, in her chosen line of work, formal education, very, very important, a requirement, obviously. My son, Brian, not really a great student at all, is an entrepreneur, uh, doing a fantastic job. He's running three small businesses. We put together property business together, makes a lot of money, he's happy. Um, and really, formal education, not an important deal. He has a small business coach who's incredibly helpful, but formal education, not particularly useful in his world at all. So my answer to that is it all depends. One of the people who endorsed my book is Liz Smith. And Liz will tell you, a lot of people she interacts with were not the A students. In fact, they were often the dropouts. They're often rich now. So I would say it just depends on what path you want to take in life. If you want to take a path that requires formal education, I think it's critically important. There are other alternatives, though. Be an entrepreneur, maybe not so important. Look at almost all the great entrepreneurs are dropouts. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, I think that's a great answer. I think, you know, you know, just to sum it up, is it really does come down to the individual and really what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, and I, again, I get answers all over the place, but, but – I agree with what you say. It really has to do with what you want to do uh, in life. Now, uh, so for someone that has, again, you've written 31 books. It's been, I think they've, they've, your books have been translated in practically every language. You've sold millions uh, of books. You're, you're an executive coach. In this day and age, uh, in your business and w- what you do, uh, what is the most effective form of marketing? Uh, I think you need multiple forms of marketing. Uh, Let me give you my advice just on a personal marketing point of view. Build a brand. Build a brand. Have a very clear, simple, and distinct brand. My mission is to help successful leaders achieve positive long-term change in behavior. Do a Google search helping successful leaders. First 500 hits, 450 are me. The rest of the world is 50. That's a brand. Uh, Who's the most famous executive coach? Me. Right. That's a brand. That's a brand. I've worked very hard to build a very clear and distinct personal brand. I think one thing I would say, if you're in a personal business like I am, that's critically important. If you're in a small business, it's important to build a brand for your business as well and use multiple forms of marketing. And this is the new world. You have to be able to use 
uh, internet, for example, LinkedIn, I have 381,000 followers. Um, not that I count, of course, uh, that, you know, I've got, you, you, you need to, you need to look at all kinds of social media. Uh, I do blogs every week like you, I, uh, I have videos I make every week. I do videos. So I, I think it's important to use multiple forms of marketing and don't just rely on one. Now, you mentioned building a brand, and that's really something that you're starting to see. Uh, you know, you got guys like Gary Vaynerchuk is out there. He's just a, he's amazing at it as far as building a brand digitally. And, and, and the interesting thing that you talk, you said that you, you worked very hard at it. It, it, it. It's not easy building a personal brand, is it? Not at all, and there's no short-term payoff for it. Right. Uh, you've got to be willing to make that long-term sacrifice, the, long, the short-term sacrifice for the long-term gain. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that makes a lot of sense because again, you you know you, you're on in this day and age with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and all these different social media uh, outlets, uh, and as those continue to grow, it becomes even more and more difficult. But I think, like you said, there's really no secret. It's just putting the work in. And what you know, the other thing too, I just want to uh, just mention about the stuff that you do is what, when, as far as building your brand, the information that you do put out, uh, irrespective of your books, you know, and your blogs and the things you write about, um, that's good content, right? You you're not just pumping stuff out there just for the purposes of putting it out there. You're putting out good, valuable content for people, right? Isn't that kind of a key element? Well, and again, that requires thinking. That requires effort with no immediate payoff. Let me give you the best coaching advice I didn't listen to. Years ago, I met a very famous man named Dr. Paul Hersey, H-E-R-S-E-Y, who was a mentor of mine, and he was kind enough to let me follow him around to learn to do what he did. One day he got double booked. He said, Marshall, can you do what I do? I said, I don't know. He said, I need help. Can you help me? I said, I don't know. He said, I'll pay $1,000 for one day. That was 39 years ago. I was making $28,000. I was making, excuse me, $15,000 a year, and I was 28 years old. $1,000 for one day 39 years ago to a kid was a lot of money. Yeah. And I said, you know, Paul, I'll try well, I ended up doing a program for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. I got ranked first place of all speakers. They were very upset when I showed up, but they called Paul and said, send Marshall again. He did great. Paul says, you want to do this again? I said, Paul, sign me up. Then let me give you the coaching I didn't listen to. After about a year or two, Paul called me in and he said, you're too good at what you're doing. You're making too much money. He said, you're never going to be the person you could become. You're not building your brand, you're not investing, you're not writing, you're not thinking, you're like a hamster running around on that hamster cage. You're selling a lot of days and you're making money, you're not becoming the person you could be, and you never will if you don't change. I lived that out for 12 years. Wow. If I had to live my life over, that's the one thing I would have changed. I would have really started at a younger age, focusing on building my brand, thinking, developing content, writing, and not been quite so interested just to run around and sell days all the time. It's very dangerous when we're comfortable and things are going pretty good to just sort of settle and say, and not make that extra effort required to take it to the next level. And, and that's got to be hard too. Like you said, back then, what did you say, 29, 30 years ago, when, you, when you're not making a lot of money to go from not, from not go from making $15,000 a year to make $1,000 in a day, uh, it, it can, it can kind of cloud your judgment, right? Or as far as the, as far as the money is concerned. Oh yeah. It's mind boggling. Yeah. And so, I mean, the good news, I didn't waste the money. I wasn't like some athlete that, you know, makes a fortune and squanders it all. I didn't do that. I really wasn't investing though. I was just out there selling days. And um, nothing wrong with that. I did a good job and people were happy and my clients were happy. I was not becoming the person I could have been. Yeah. Well, I think that's I think that's sound advice. And for those of you that are experiencing a little bit of success uh, as, as you grow, you know, again, I think it goes back to what we were talking about before. Step back, take a, assess the situation, see where you're doing, and see if it's really where you want to be. Uh, next question I have for you, Marshall. You, you look like a very fit guy. We haven't met face-to-face, -face, but I wanted to ask you this question because as an entrepreneur myself and entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast and watch this podcast, stress is a big deal. Inc. Magazine a couple years ago wrote a great article about how stress really impacts our entrepreneurs and business people, what do you do outside of your, you know, your business life to handle stress? I mean, you travel all over the place too. How do you handle stress? Well, to me, I actually have very little stress. I love what I do. I don't have to work. I love what I do. I make a lot of money. I have fun. I find happiness and meaning in my work. So for me, I cannot say that I have a lot of stress. In fact, I 
the harder thing for me is not stress. The harder thing for me is just exercise, diet, and health. There, I need help. So I'm a member of a new group now called Aravail, and what they do is, that's one of my coaching clients, I, I have a coach that helps me with nutrition, with diet, with exercise. Why? That's the area where I need more help. It's not stress. They tested me on stress stuff, and I have, I'm like the top 1% on having no stress. So I really don't have a lot of psychological stress. What's harder for me is just the basic stay in shape, exercise, diet. And by the way, I'm 67. As you get older, it's harder. Right. <laughs> it does get it's, harder. When I was young, I could eat like a pig and never gain a pound. Well, those days are over. Now it's a lot harder for me to stay in shape than it was when I was young. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you know, from the pictures, the pictures I've seen of you, you look like you're doing something right. So that, uh, that's, uh, that's a good thing. And, you know, again, I want to just reiterate what you said, love what you do. You know, one of the questions I wanted to ask though, and I've talked to people about this before, and we talk about passion a lot about being passionate about what you do. And you find that some, most people actually aren't really in a position, uh, in their life where they're passionate about what they do. What do you say to those people who are trying to find that passion? Um, and how do you stay motivated when you're in a job or a career that you're not really passionate about? Let me give you what I would give all my coaching clients on this, what I call plan A and plan B, and you can do both simultaneously. Plan A, when you're where you are every day, six questions. Did I do my best to be happy? Did I do my best to find meaning? Did I do my best to set clear goals? Did I do my best to make progress toward achieving my own goals? Did I do my best to build positive relationships? And did I do my best to be fully engaged? Every day, six questions. Our research on this is amazing. Any of your listeners want to participate in the study, send me an email, marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com. I'll sign them up. But just by challenging yourself these six questions every day, life gets a lot better. That's plan A. Plan B, find someplace else to go. Right. Yeah, fine. And, you know, don't cut off your nose to spite your fish. Never leave a job, you know, just to leave a job. Because, you know, most of your listeners have family, they have people they have to support. You can't just blithely say goodbye. On the other hand, if you're not happy where you are, you sit there and say, all right, how can I get someplace else? And maybe you do need more education. Maybe you do need a different training. Maybe you need something. Whatever it is, do it. Because life is too precious to waste doing stuff you really hate doing. Yeah, that's, uh, again, amazing, amazing advice. I am so fortunate to have with us Marshall Goldsmith. He is the number one executive coach in the world. He's written over 31 books. His latest book, Triggers, Creating Behavior That Lasts, Becoming the Person You Want to Be. I love his books. I, that's how we kind of first got introduced. Uh, you know, his first book, Mojo, uh, it was is a great book. And also, uh, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. If you'd like some more information about Marshall Goldsmith, like he said, you can just Google Marshall Goldsmith, and he's going to be one of the top 500 things that come up under Marshall goldsmith because he knows how to build a brand he's been building his brand for for years so if you want some more information about marshall also again you can just email him at marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com and take that uh that, that that little exam there he's also on uh he's also on uh twitter and uh he's all his 381,000 followers not that he's counting on linkedin uh as well marshall this is kind of a fill in the blank uh question i, I like to ask everyone i'm gonna ask you the second part of it um if I lack blank, then I will not be successful. Yeah, and that is, uh, I'm going to go back to word you've already said. If you lack passion, sure, you will not be successful because the reality is, even if you make money, you won't be successful as I define success because you're not finding happiness and meaning. Right. So to me, if you don't find happiness and meaning, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. You can have all the money in the world. Who cares? Right, and and, and like you said too, that there is a there is a, a process, and some people are fortunate enough to find uh, almost immediately in life what they're passionate about. But you know, uh, my daughter just read the Jane Goodall story, and you know when she you know when she first started, I think she was given a, a little uh, chimpanzee as a, as a as a little doll that she loved or whatever. But she you know she didn't at first start working with chimpanzees and, and find her passion. It took a little bit of time uh, before she got there. So for those of you that again that are looking for that passion, you have the plan A, plan B, like Mark. Marshall uh, talked about, right? I mean, it's not it's not always going to immediately be there for you. And, th and that's the reason why I, 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 I'm, t I'm kind of going off on a tangent a little bit. So many people, Marshall, do want that instant gratification, but it doesn't always happen that quick, right? Definitely not. Right. In fact, seldom does. Right. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, okay, question number seven. We're getting down to the end. I really appreciate your time. Uh, and again, it's really been amazing. And uh, what advice, a lot of young uh, people listen to this podcast and watch this podcast as well. What advice would you give young people in the workforce on how to grow right now? Your mission in life is to make a positive difference, not to prove how right you are, not to prove how smart you are. If we get over this need to prove we're right, to always try to win and prove we're smarter than everyone else and our ideas are better than everyone else and realize I am not here on this earth to prove how smart I am or right I am, I'm here to make a positive difference. Before you deal with any topic, ask yourself a very important question. Am I willing at this time to make the investment required to make a positive difference on this topic? If the answer is yes, go for it. If the answer is no, take a deep breath and let it go. Don't waste your life on stuff you're not gonna control. Who cares about the sports team, the coach, Lindsay Lohan, Kim Kardashian, politicians? They don't care about you. Put your time and energy where you can make a positive difference. Don't waste your time and energy where you're not going to change anything anyway. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. I talk a lot about activity versus accomplishment, and I think this is a a higher level of way of thinking of it. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, This one, I I think, uh, is is really important and and, important. in this day and age where we're so busy with all these different things and business and, you know, again, whether you're in the workforce, whether you're an entrepreneur and, and for you, for someone who I think, I don't know, what do you speak a couple hundred times a year and you're an author and you do all these things, plus you're a coach. Um, can you give us a secret strategy or business technique that allows you and your business to become more efficient? Yeah, that is that daily question process. Okay. You know, I would, Figure out what you want to do. Measure it every day. Get a coach to help you. Yeah. And get over being ashamed. Get over that. Sense. Like, I pay a woman to call me every day, listen to me read questions I wrote and provide answers I wrote. Well, most people be ashamed to do that. Why? You know, I can do it on my own. Let me give you a guideline. Think about something you haven't fixed by yourself for, like, the last 20 years. You're not going to fix it by yourself next week. Who are you kidding? Realize you need help, and it's okay. Get some people to help you, and life's going to be better. Yeah, you know, I, again, I think that is such sound advice because we talked earlier about, you know, egos, and, and I have a big ego. And, and for me, you know, being able to actually interview people and talk to people uh, like you has definitely helped me throughout the years. And we, you know, we talk a lot about, uh, you had mentioned your mentor, Dr. Paul Hersey. Having a mentor is super important, right? Oh, totally. And if I look at, let me talk about a project I'm working on now. Sure. Uh, years ago, I was a coach of a man named Brian Walker. Brian is still the CEO of Herman Miller. Herman Miller is one of the world's largest furniture companies. He had me interview his key stakeholders. I interviewed a lady named Aisha Bursell. She's from Turkey, and she's a designer. She designed furniture, but she designs all kinds of things. She wrote a book uh, recently called Design the Life You Love. I went to her program, and as part of the program, she said, who are your heroes? And I mentioned people like Peter Drucker and Paul Hersey, Alan Mulally, Francis Hesselbein. These are great people who taught me so much. And then I realized they never charged me anything. They're very generous people. Then she said, well, cross out their name and write in your name. Why aren't you like them? Well, I thought, you know, I could be more like them. I've decided to basically adopt 15 people who are in the speaking, coaching, teaching world, teach them everything I know for free. I'm going to be their mentor. And uh, I'm gonna, they're going to spend eight days of training with me. I'm going to invite them to meet many of the CEOs that I've worked with who are graciously involving themselves in the project to help me. I'm going to teach them everything I know. And the only price is when they get old like I am, they have to do the same thing for 15 other people. Wow. That is amazing. And Marshall, I, I have to say the first thing that came to mind as I wrote this down is how do I become one of the 15? Well, if you want to apply, just send me an email and write 15 coaches and my name, Marshall at MarshallGoldsmith.com. Marshall has two L's. I'll be happy to let you know how to apply. Wow, that is an amazing opportunity, folks. Again, if you you know if you want to get better, if you are a CEO, if you're an executive, if you're if you're out there, if you're trying to change the world, if you're a thought leader, and you want to be with the number one executive coach in the world who's written 31 books, New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestseller, sold millions of copies. People pay him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Again, at the front page of his front pages of his book triggers the first five or six pages are endorsements for, from some of the most powerful executives uh, in the world. Just in the back, again, I talk. The CEO of Pfizer uh, endorsed the book, CEO of Target, CEO of Best Buy. I mean, this gentleman has been doing it a long time, and I'm super, super honored to have him on here. So if you want some more information, 
information about Marshall Goldsmith. It's Marshall at MarshallGoldsmith.com. Again, you can just Google him. He's on Twitter. He's on LinkedIn as well. Marshall, last question. Thank I want to, again. I want to thank you so much for spending the time with me because I've been feverishly right, taking notes, and for me, this is just such an awesome experience. If you could leave our viewers and listeners with one piece of advice in business, other than what you've already given us, which is, again, it's been awesome because I've been taking notes feverishly, what would that secret piece of advice be? Take a deep breath. Imagine you're 95 years old and you're just getting ready to die. Before you take your last breath, you're given a beautiful gift, the ability to go back in time and talk to the person that's listening to me right now. The ability to help that person be a better professional and, more important, have a better life. What advice would that old person who knows what mattered and didn't matter and what was important and not important have for the youth that's listening to me right now? Well, whatever you're thinking now, do that. Wow. Some friends of mine interviewed old folks who are dying, got to ask this question. Three themes came up. Theme number one on the personal side, be happy now. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Be happy now. Number two, people, friends, family, do whatever you can to help friends, family, and people. And then finally, if you have a dream, go for it. Because if you don't go for it when you're 35, you may not when you're 85. And it doesn't have to be a big one, maybe a little one. Go to New Zealand or speak Spanish. Whatever it is for you, do it. Old people, we almost never regret the risk we take and fail. We always regret the risk we fail to take. Wow. That was... I got chills just thinking about that. You know, I talk about the if I had only syndrome. But, you know, folks, we've been on with, with Marshall uh, Goldsmith. He is just an amazing individual. I am so honored to have you on here. He's, again, he's written 31 books. His latest book, Triggers, Creating Behavior That Lasts, Becoming the Person You Want to Be. If you want some more information about Marshall Goldsmith, you can go to marshallgoldsmith.com. He's also allowed us, you can email him, marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com if you want to take that assessment test. You know, and if you're an executive out there, if you're a business person out there and you want to learn more, if you want to grow the first thing I would say is pick up his books. And then the second thing is is drop him an email because he probably, you know what, he's got 381,000 followers. He got back to me. Uh, it took me a little while because he's a busy guy. But for him to come on here and do this is just shows, you know, how gracious he is and how willing he is to help others and share with, the, share with us the knowledge that he's learned o over the years. Marshall, I, I want to thank you uh, for being, uh, being my guest here on the Alden Report. My name is Michael Alden, and this has been another edition of the Alden Report, and we'll see you next time. All right, this episode is brought to you by my good friend and number one New York Times bestselling author Ryan Blair in his latest book, Rock Bottom to Rock Star, Lessons from the Business School of Hard Knocks. Ryan Blair has battled extreme obstacles from being a former gang member to building companies that generate literally hundreds of millions of dollars. Rock Bottom to Rock Star is available everywhere. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Books A Million. It's available on Barnes & Noble. Folks, if you want to be inspired, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur, then pick up Ryan Blair's latest book, Rock Bottom to Rock Star, Lessons from the Business School of Hard Knocks. If you'd like some more information about Ryan Blair, please visit ryanblair.com.